Red Dead Redemption 2 recently released on PC and I wanted to take a comprehensive look at all of the ports of the game available. Whether you're checking out what's new in the PC version or deciding between a platform to get it for, we've got you covered. Not only will we get an overview of the graphics and performance differences between the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, Rockstar has actually added some exclusive content to the PC version that I'd like to take a look at as well and show what all that stuff is about. I like to hold a philosophy that so long as you enjoy your experience, there's no wrong way of playing the game. There are drastic performance and graphic differences between the ports, but how much of those matter to folks differs. Now before we get started, this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a turn-based mobile RPG done right. It's currently a hit among the mobile gaming scene as the RPG to change everything, and it's growing every day with over 15 million downloads in the last 6 months. It's an epic dark fantasy turn-based game with over 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize. You can play through the fully voiced story campaign, raid with friends in a clan, or claim glory in the PvP arena. And the best part, it's free to play. Some of its features include the multi-battle auto mode, set battles to run in auto mode while you go do something else, spend less time grinding and more time developing your teams and fighting the fun stuff. There's also weekly tournaments and events, fighting in the arena, running special dungeons, or just level up your heroes, there's always a way to compete and win extra prizes every week. As we can see from the developer roadmap, they actually have huge plans for updates in the game for over 6 months. With this much content being added continuously, there's no time to get bored. You can find me in the game under the name Austin SV, and if you're quick enough you can also join my clan. I'm usually pretty busy, so I spent my downtime while working on this video between recording and rendering playing Raid. If you're like me, then it's a great game to turn on and play while you've got time to burn. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special link, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, and I'll see you there. With that out of the way, let's get started with the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game. Through updates over time, the performance of the ports have all slightly changed in terms of bugs, quality, and performance, so we're going to speak in a broad sense that should still be correct months or years down the line. The current version of the game recorded on all platforms was version 1.14. Covering this game is a bit different than the usual ones I do, as Rockstar is always constantly updating the game, so I can't get into as much detail as I'd like without potentially dating the video. I suggest if you're running into issues on console, you're welcome to comment them below to let others know or to thumb up the comments if you're having the same issues. There's also resources like the Rockstar forums and the Red Dead Redemption subreddit for troubleshooting. Content is identical between the PS4 and Xbox One, so visuals and performance are the main focal points between the two consoles. I have on hand an Xbox One S and a PS4 Pro. Xbox One X achieves the highest resolution of the game at a native 4K, followed by the PS4 Pro at 1920x2160. Then in third is the base PS4 at 1080p, and then the Xbox One S is the lowest resolution version of the game on console at 864p. It's worth mentioning that the technique used by the PS4 Pro to achieve 4K using the 1920x2160 output comes with some caveats. We'll notice that when we compare the PS4 Pro to the base PS4, the image is generally a little blurrier despite being a higher resolution. But you can get around this if you're on a PS4 Pro and using a 1080p screen, you can just disable super sampling. Frame rate wise, all of the console versions go up as high as 30fps. Xbox One X achieves the most stable frame rates, followed by the PS4 Pro, and then the base PS4 and Xbox One S frame rates can be pretty inconsistent. And just another heads up, if you disable super sampling on your PS4 Pro, you'll get a little more consistent FPS. So this isn't all too surprising, as this generally follows how powerful the 8th gen consoles are. The best console experience in terms of visuals and performance is the Xbox One X. However, this is one of the best looking games of this generation. The visuals offered by the other platforms aren't anything to scoff at. Though if frame rates being inconsistent bothers you, you may want to steer clear of the game on Xbox One S or base PS4. Now, what about the PC version? PC is where you can look for the most customization, best performance, best graphics, and as it turns out, most content as well, at least for now. The PC version boasts features such as 4K support, uncapped FPS, ultra-wide, and multi-monitor support. Visually, Rockstar has improved the draw distance, shadow and texture resolution, global illumination, ambient occlusion, and lighting in the PC port. This is an incredibly demanding game, and most people likely will not be touching the highest quality preset and achieve 60 FPS. 
That said, there are a ton of graphic options, and to get the best experience, you'll probably spend a lot of time tweaking all of them to your hardware. I'll link in the comments an article with this chart and a thorough explanation on what exactly you're tweaking in the settings. Now, the PC version launched with a myriad of reported issues ranging from stuttering and performance issues to crashes. Since launch, there have been updates for the game itself and the Rockstar Launcher. For future proofing's sake, I won't cover these issues in depth as they might not be relevant even a month from now or around the time the game launches on Steam. It is still worth saying though that your results with the performance of the PC version may vary. Again, I encourage anyone with issues to share them in the comments, as well as consult the subreddit or forums. Now, let's get to the content updates. There are three new Bounty Hunter missions in the postgame. Herman Zinzendorf in Blackwater, Camille de Millamont in Tumbleweed, and Bar Kavanaugh in Strawberry. There's two new gang hideouts for the Del Lobos gang. They can be found at Gaptooth Breach and Solomon's Folly. Two new treasure map missions were added. Landmarks of Riches is the first one, and the first map for it is located at the Obelisk on the map northwest of Strawberry. You may be able to do this one at Chapter 2, but definitely you can do it at Chapter 3. The second treasure map mission is the Elemental Trail. This is a post-game map, and it's located at the tip of the southwest end of the map. There will be a guy hanging and you gotta shoot him down and loot it off of him. A new stranger mission was added called To the Ends of the Earth. It can be started right at Chapter 2 and it's just east of your camp. And you'll find a man who will ask you to go find some herbs. Four new weapons were added, three of which were previously exclusive to Red Dead Online. The Evans Repeater is a high capacity repeater and it can be found at any gunsmith. The M1899 pistol is a semi-automatic handgun with clip-loaded ammunition, and the Lamette revolver is a revolver that shoots shotgun shells. These two can be found at Saint-Denis. And then there's the High Roller Revolver, which is a double-action revolver, and this one can be obtained at a fence. Four new horses were added. Now these can be found in multiple locations, but I'll tell you some confirmed locations. If you found them anywhere else, feel free to share in the comments. First is the Warped Brindle Arabian. It can be found in the north, near the Wapiti Indian Reservation. Second is the Few Spots Appaloosa, which can be found in the northwest, outside of Pronghorn Ranch. Third is the Perilindo Andalusian, which can be found up near Brandywine Drop. And fourth is the Red Chestnut Arabian, which can be found west of Strawberry and south of the Obelisk from earlier. Rockstar also listed the Buttermilk Buckskin Kentucky Saddler, Liver Chestnut Morgan, and Gold Palomino Tennessee Walker as exclusive horses, but people have reported finding them in the single player on console, so these are not actually exclusive to PC. And five new trinkets were added. The Hawk Talon permanently decreases stamina bar drain speed by 30% when drawing a bow. The Cat Eye permanently increases the length of fortifying tonic effects by 20%. The Shark Tooth permanently increases Horse Bonding Experience bonus by 10%. The Turtle Shell permanently increases Health Bar Refill Speed by 10%. And lastly, the Crow Beak permanently increases Looted Ammo by 10%. There's also a new Photo Mode, and most of its options include an Orbital or Free Camera, Lens Sizes, Roll, Focal Settings, Exposure, Contrast, and Filters. And if there was any concern about it, Red Dead Online content is up to date with the console versions. Ultimately, we can say that the PC version is the definitive version of the game, barring the hardware issues that will hopefully get sorted out. Though to be fair, like I said, this is one of the best looking games of the generation, and it's hard to go wrong with the console versions unless frame rates are an issue for you like they are for me. We also don't know if the exclusive PC content will remain exclusive either, and if it doesn't, at least this video still serves as a guide to that content. Now a question for the future. How will this game fare if it's ported to PS5 and Project Scarlet? Will we see 60 FPS or at least native 4K? Will any further content be included? Only time will tell, but please let me know if you're interested in seeing me cover that eventually. In the meantime, I have a myriad of comprehensive port reviews of other games on my channel if you're interested, and I can also be found on Patreon. You're also free to follow me on Twitter. So, until next time, thank you for watching.